testimony you give to the jury will be the truth and the whole truth under the penalties of perjury. Yes, I do. Please be seated. Thank you. The position of the microphone should be fine. I'm just okay. going to ask you to keep your voice up. You do not have to sit too close okay. to it. Good morning. Can you say your full name, spelling your last name? Good morning. Erin Saxon. Last name is S-A-X-O-N. What is your occupation? I'm an investigator with the New Hampshire Public Defender's Office. Could you um, briefly describe what an investigator does for the New Hampshire Public Defenders? Sure. We do a variety of things. Um, we get requests from attorneys. Uh, we uh, interview witnesses, write reports. Um, we subpoena people. We find people. Um, we gather uh, records. We sometimes are a part of creating exhibits and um, testifying. Okay. Um, so, as an investigator, uh, were you assigned a task to Mr. Verrill's defense? Yes, I was. And what task were those? I was to review um, uh, his two cell phone records, messages, uh, and verify the accuracy, their, the date, time, uh, and the content, uh, and, and cross-reference it against the exhibits to assure accuracy. And in addition to those, uh, reviewing those texts, did you do anything else? I did. Um, I reviewed, in, or reviewed a transcript for a 911 call, um, and I listened to the 911 call. And the, I'm going to go to the 911 call first. And um, before I go there, do you know, did, were you assigned to any other aspects of Mr. Barrell's case? No. Um, the parts of the 911 call that's going to be played, did you review that? Yes. And um, based on your review of the transcript and listening to the call, were you able to identify the caller based on the context of the call? Yes. And who was the caller? Uh, the caller was Dean Smoronk. <clears throat> And before you play that, Attorney Nye, could I just see counsel at the bench for a moment? Just to be clear that what we'll be listening to is about nine seconds of the call. Does that, that sound about right? That sounds about right, yes. Thank <laughs> you. 
the turning now to your review of um, text messages. Could you explain to the jurors how you um, were able to verify the accuracy of the of the text messages that I'm about to review? Yes. Um, so I reviewed it. It's, uh, it was provided through discovery from the state. Uh, it was a, a ex extraction and examination done by the New Hampshire State Police um, for his two phone call, his two phone numbers, okay, one from AT and T, one from Verizon. Okay. Um, if I may approach the witness. Just yes. 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 I show you one dated December 7, 2016, Dean to Christine. Is that one of the uh, texts that you reviewed? Yes, it is. And it's been marked as A4, if I may read it into the record, Your Honor. Is there any objection? Go ahead. Can you see the way you give negative business rep repercussions because of purely personal issues? I needed information countless times and you failed me because you wanted to say, fuck you, Dean. Think about it. How many financially related facts do you have part or even all of the picture on that I should know about? Yes, there are financial arrangements that should be settled but what about you respecting my position enough to debrief me? You don't want me to know tons, I'm sure. And did she, um, is this text message dated December 11th, 2016, Dean to Christine? Did you review that one for accuracy? Yes, I did. And is that accurate? Yes. Defense exhibit B4. Hey, you want to know one of my biggest reasons why I hated having you as my girlfriend? Hey, you want to know one of my of the biggest reasons why I hated having you as my, it says GF, not girlfriend. Hey, you want to know one of the biggest reasons why I hated having you as my GF? I can never fucking get you on the fucking phone. Defense Exhibit Mark C4 Double A, December 11, 2016. Dean to Christine. Is that accurate? Yes, it is. You are not hired back. Defense Exhibit C4 B, dated December 17, 2016. Text from Dean to Christine. Is that one accurate? Yes, it is. Okay, miss, I did nothing wrong. I want to talk to you up here and it's long overdue. You and I will not waste another minute of our lives. You either respond or this day turns to shit. I'm not waiting any longer. Defense exhibit C4C dated Text dated December 17, 2016. Dean to Christine. Is that accurate? Yes, it is. You're full of bullshit, and I need you and your cockeyed fucking mouth the fuck out of my way in my life. <coughs> December 17, 2016. Defense Exhibit C4D. Is that text accurate? Yes, it is. You denying the facts does not make them go away. Let me explain something. You have your moments, but mostly I think you're a fucking asshole. I don't like you. I have very little love left for you. You have proven yourself over and over to be a selfish, neurotic punk. I don't respect you. I don't need you. I don't want you. You instigate my pain and hatred. And I wish I never met you because no matter what I try, I cannot get your cooperation, not even to discuss what I need to discuss. 
you make constant promises, you don't deliver, and you're a drug addict that wants to say you do less shit than I do when you know that ain't true. Do you understand now why I say fuck you, Christine? December 17th, Exhibit C4E, December 17, 2016. Dean to Christine. Is that accurate? <coughs> yes, it is. I will do nothing with you because there is no respect between us. You're in my life for the ride, pillow queen. You're still a pig-headed cunt, and I am done with you. You are going to regret what you are doing. I promise you that if you don't stop now. I've never hated you more. You always have to stir your pot of shit and make it worse, don't you, stupid? Why can't you just butt the fuck out of my life and leave people the fuck out of your pathetic <clears throat> fucking drama? No, you gotta be the constant asshole fuck. I fucking hate you more each minute. Motherfucker, you didn't come here to make, to take a fucking vacation. Your fucking days are numbered. You, your so-called love is a motherfucking curse to me. December 23rd, 2016. Dean to Christine, Defense Exhibit D4. Is that, did you review the accuracy of that text? Yes, I did. And is it accurate? Yes. You need to kiss some ass or life is going to get harder and harder. I don't know who you think you are, but think again, because I stopped playing foolish games when I was a kid. Get your shit straight and get in line, because I ain't having no more of your fancy dish, Missy. What's yours is opportunity, and that's it. All you've been doing lately is fucking it up. Defense Exhibit E4, text message dated December 24, 2016. Dean to Christine, did you review the accuracy of this text? Yes, I did. And is, that, is it accurate? Yes, it is. You're going to see 2017 be the worst goddamn single year of your life, Christine. I'm going to find you an ugly, fat ass motherfucker. I wish you were dead already. Filthy, disgusting, stank, snatched, geriatric, fuck. You ain't shit. I fucking hate everything about your ugly being. I fucking swear, Christine, you just fucking turned this lethal motherfucker. You might as well call the fucking cops on me now, you piece of shit, because I'm going to find you, you fuck, disgusting, disgusting, ugly piece of shit I fucking see or smell in my life. If you ever lay it in the rest of your life, it'll be like some toothless fucking old homeless agency. The fuck can fuck anything else on the face of this earth except you, you disgusting fucking dirtbag. December 25th, 2016. Text message from Dean to Christine. Defense exhibit. G4, did you view the accuracy of this text message? Yes, I did. And is it accurate? Yes. I'm going to put your shit outside, though. I'm done all your fucking me and ignoring me. I'm doing to follow you to New Hampshire when you leave and remove you from the, from the ranch. Is that what you call your respect? There is one way you will win this piece of shit, and I don't care anymore. You made me hate you by being a relentless fucking cunt. Good job, you stupid fuck. See how far you get before you start to suck dick too. Believe me when I say if you get me sued, you won't be able to hide your fucking drama queen. You have short time left on this earth. It's time you face some puking reality, excuse me, time you face some fucking reality and see futile waste you promote. Defense Exhibit H4A, text dated January 14, 2017, Dean to Christine. Did you review the accuracy of this text? Yes, I did. Is it accurate? Yes. You're so fucking stubborn, you kept bringing shit and bringing shit. What the WTF do you expect 
by now. What have you have no fucking respect for anything but what you want because you're always right and the only victim here. I want my place, my peace, my friendships, my safety, and my life back. You have only gotten more obstinate and unbearable since this started. Defense Exhibit I-4, dated, text dated January 15, 200, 2017, Dean to Christine. Did you uh, check the accuracy of this text? Yes, I did. And is it accurate? Yes, it is. <clears throat> I'm going to cut you right to the fucking bone because you're a greedy, self-centered piece of shit. Defense Exhibit H4-BB, text dated January 15, 2017, Dean to Christine. Did you check the accuracy of this text? Yes, I did. Is it accurate? Yes, it is. I want your fucking number. What the fuck do you think I need to pay your greedy fucking ass to get you the fuck out of my life? Defense Exhibit J4, text dated January 17, 2017, Dean to Christine. Did you check the accuracy of this text? Yes, I did. And um, is it accurate? Yes, it is. You are a greedy, motherfucking, selfish bitch. All the texts that I have read are marked as full exhibits. When you review the phone records to check the accuracy of the text, um, are these the only texts that were between Dean and Christine? No. And were you the one that chose the text to be read to the jury? No. They were, you were simply asked to check the accuracy of the text? That's correct. Right. May I have a moment? Yes. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Uh, Cross-examination. So Dean certainly has horrible things to say about Christine in his text messages, right? Yes. Vile things. Yes. Disgusting things. Yes. And these were things that he said not just to Christine, but to other people as well, right? Yes. They weren't feelings that he just kept to himself? I don't think so. He wasn't subtle or discreet about telling people how he felt about Christine. True. He vented at Christine? Yes. He vented to others about Christine? Correct. Including the defendant, right? I believe so. And I'm going to show you a text message from State's Exhibit 15. <coughs> Dean Smarok and Timothy Barrow, and I'll point you to the messages on the bottom right at about 9.40 a.m. on January 15th. Dean tells the defendant, there should be no secrets among us bros. There also should be no secrets about business plans among my domestic partner and I. How many times has Christine said to you, don't tell Dean? 
There's my point. If I tell her everything to you, she knows all of my dealings in detail, yet she is trying to set herself up to walk away in innocence. Time she needs to know that when she calls them, the primary extra damage she will cause will be for conspiracy, which she will without a doubt die in a facility for. Now about your goddamn confusion, it's time to fucking talk, mister. And then two messages down from that at 10.01, Dean texts the defendant, sorry Crystal, and would Christine, my disloyal lying bitch of a partner, be there or been there? So fair to say Dean was also venting to the defendant about Christine. If these are accurate, I didn't review these for accuracy. And Dean appears to be telling the defendant that he's worried about Christine speaking with the police? Objection. Yes? Uh, it's in the text message. Right. Uh, overruled. Can you ask that again, please? So Dean appears to be telling the defendant that Dean is worried about Christine talking to the police when he says she is trying to set herself up to walk away in innocence, and if, if she calls them, the primary damage she will cause will be conspiracy, referring to Christine. I, I, I guess it's not entirely clear who he's talking about to me, but it, it could very well be police. Are you aware that Dean and Christine were involved in selling drugs from no. reading those text messages? No. If somebody did report to law enforcement and Dean and Christine were selling drugs, that could endanger Dean's business? Yep. Question. <clears throat> Sustained. Do you remember uh, the phone numbers, the specific phone numbers for the two phones you reviewed? Uh, the beginning of them, yes. Okay. Was one of them 603-833-6735? It sounds right. That was one of Dean's phones? Correct. And you said you reviewed the extractions. Did you review the phone records themselves? Uh, the phone records. So from the carrier of the phone? Um, I believe so. Uh, and these murders occurred on January 27th. Dean's phone records all show that his phone was in Florida at the time, is that right? From, I, from text messages, I think he said he was, but that Well, okay, was, I'll show you. Yeah. I'll show you States Exhibit 18 and you can tell me if that's something okay. you reviewed or if it's just the extraction. So this is State's Exhibit 18. Did you review any of this data from the actual phone company? It, not in, no, not in detail. I don't remember any of that. Okay. Well, uh, let me ask you, in the mobile directory number listed for all of these entries is 603-833-6735. That was the number associated with one of Dean's phones? Yes. And for the uh, network element name column, all of these entries say Miami West, right? That's correct. And again, all those text messages you read show Dean certainly had strong feelings about Christine, right? Correct. How did he feel about Jenna Pellegrini? I don't know. There was nothing in his phone indicating he even knew who Jenna Pellegrini was, was there? I don't know that. I, it's not what I reviewed, no. You didn't see any text messages from Dean to Jenna? Not that I recall. You didn't see any text message where Dean had any personal animosity towards Jenna? Not that I recall. You didn't see any information that Dean believed Jenna was talking to the police? Not to my knowledge. And all those messages that you just read, 
they were recovered from Dean's cell phone, right? I'm sorry, which messages? The, the ones, ones that you just read with Attorney Knott? Uh, yes. And that was a cell phone that he voluntarily turned over to law enforcement? I don't know that. Well, review, you reviewed an extraction, so state police uh, obtained that phone from Mr. Schmeronk? It could have been subpoenaed. I don't know that he turned it over. Uh, but by virtue of that extraction, that extraction allows the police to see all the data on that phone, right? I believe so. Text messages? Correct. Phone calls? Yes. Other communications like Facebook or other messaging apps? Beyond my scope, but. <laughs> uh, pic sure. Any pictures and videos yes, that are on the phone? Yes, pictures and videos for sure, yeah. So if Dean voluntarily turned over his phone, he handed all those things over to the police, right? That would be accurate, yeah. Uh, now I want to, speaking of information Dean provided to the police, Dean was the one to call 911, right? In that call you reviewed? Yes. Did you review, we played about nine seconds of it, did you review that entire phone call? I did. And that phone call in total was about 20 minutes long? Correct. And in that call, Dean summoned the police to his house because he had seen blood on a mattress and couldn't find Christine, right? That's correct. He thought that a murder had occurred? Correct. So he called the police? True. And the information he provided in the clip that we listened to was not the only information he provided during that call, right? <clears throat> Correct. He told the police that the garage windows were spray painted? Yes. He told them that he found blood on a mattress? Correct. Uh, he told the uh, operator that he could not find Christine's cell phone? Correct. And he discussed the events of the preceding days with them about trying to locate Christine? Right. He answered all the questions asked to him on that call? Yes. He didn't refuse to answer any questions? No, he struggled with some details, but yes. Uh, and his demeanor during the portion of the call we listened to wasn't his demeanor for the entire phone call, right? Correct. He could be heard crying at times in that phone call? Yes. He sounded audibly upset about what was going on. Sure. You have one moment, Judge. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Any redirect? No. All right, thank you. Uh, Ma'am, you may step down and you are excused. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>